Hi everyone and welcome to our wine and chocolate pairing class. I'm Stephanie. I'm Kayla. And I'm Garrett. And we are with Fox and Honey, which is part of Baked Beer and Bread Company, and we are located inside of there for the time being. Um, we're the new catering and event and gifting company um, that's part of that brand. So we are going to chat with you guys about wine and chocolate, which are two of our most favorite things on the planet. <laughs> yeah. So um, we have four wines and four types of chocolate for everyone to try tonight. Um, one white and three reds. Um, we went with three reds because they tend to pair a little bit better with chocolate, but we'll dive into that as we go through the pairing. Um, before we dive in too much, we're going to talk about the correct way to try wine and what you should be looking for as you try and taste the wines that we have for you this evening. Um, when you try wine, smelling is tasting. Um, our taste of or our um, sense of taste, I should say, is really only salt, sweet, bitter, and umami. So most of the flavors that we get from wine come from our olfactory sense. And those can be grouped into four main categories, which are fruit, wood, earth, and other, which um, has some really interesting characteristics. Um, white wine tends to get a lot of flavors from citrus fruits or even pineapple or pears or even apples. Um, and red wine tends to get a lot of flavors from red berries or red fruits such as cherries, strawberries, raspberries, and blackberries. Um, wood, the wood type of flavor and aroma can come from how the wine was aged. A lot of wine is aged in barrels, either French or American oak, and those types of flavors can impart a tobacco or um, a caramel or vanilla types of flavor, or even some spice. Um, Thirdly, we have the earth flavor, or aroma, I should say. Um, a lot of that comes from the area that the wine was grown, which is very important in winemaking. Um, where the wine was grown, the elevation, or how, how high or low it is relative to sea level is really important, as well as the soil content. Um, so some of those aromas can be soil itself, or mushrooms, truffles, even wet stone or wet grass, which I know sounds a little weird, but um, you can get those kinds of aromas and they could be really pleasant in a nice um, glass of wine. Um, and finally, other. So other, the main uh, aroma or sense in that category is butter, which you're gonna find a lot in Chardonnays, which we'll talk about on our first pairing. Um, and that is due to a malolactic fermentation, which is a secondary fermentation that the wine goes through to get that really full-bodied, creamy mouthfeel. It can happen in both white and red wines, but it's certainly more common in white Chardonnays. Um, some other types of aromas that are classified as other include honeysuckle, citrus blossom, lavender, rose even, or some of those floral types of sensations and aromas that you find in white wines. Um, there's also a right and a wrong way to try wine, believe it or not. Um, we really, we have two glasses here in front of us, but we do want to use a white glass for our white wine. It looks like this versus a red glass that looks more like this. Um, so to get started, we do have white wine in this glass. We have um, a Chardonnay and we're going, so if you don't already have your wine poured in a glass, we recommend that you do so currently. Um, and if you need to pause the video, then please feel free to do so. Um, so we want to hold the wine up to the light and kind of see the color of the wine. So many wines, even in the white group or in the red group, have different shades and different um, colors associated with it. And as we're looking at the wine up in the light, we want to see what are called legs or wine tiers. And as the wine moves up the glass and then falls back down, you're going to see these legs and these lines fall down the glass. And these have some really elegant wine legs um, it's due to the evaporation of alcohol on the side of the glass. Um, you'll notice if a bottle of wine, if it's an unopened bottle of wine and you shake it, you don't have the same characteristics of the wine legs, and that's because there's no evaporation happening, and it's related to the alcohol content of the wine. Um, so this one has some really nice legs. Mm -hmm. um, before we taste it, we want to swirl it to really bring out those aromas in the glass and take a big, deep, long breath and smell the wine. Mm. Lots of 
fruity. Yes, this is a very nice and citrusy, fruity yeah. wine. It smells a little tart. Mm hmm And then you can finally take a little sip. Or slurp. Yes, or <laughs> slurp. It is perfectly acceptable to slurp your wine when you're wine tasting, as it brings a little bit more air into your um, mouth and nasal cavities, which help to accentuate those aromas and flavors. Now, this is a Chardonnay from Belcreme de Lis. Yep. Okay, mm -hmm. lovely. Nicely done. <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, this wine was aged in 100% French oak. Um, and that mal malolactic fermentation that she's referring to is actually two different types of acid in the wine. Um, there's, there are malic or tart acids that during the fermentation, the first fermentation kind of get cr creamy, right? And give it a little like velvety, like mouthfeel. Um, and then there's the lactic acid that kind of just like rounds everything out. And that gives you that little like bite, right? Um, there are some like slight vanilla notes from this wine. Um, and California's unique climate of like warm and in some parts like really rainy, but this warm like coastal air, there's like a little salt in the air, um, lots of heat during the day. And that's when the grapes ripen a lot. So these white wines um, are a derivative of a really sunny California. Um, climate. Uh, it kind of also results in a really like rich, like lush, like I said, like velvety type um, um, flavor. And it has a really uh, tart, uh, like a front, like mouthfeel, and then kind of smooths out as it goes down the hatch a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, very pineapple, very pear mm -hmm. um, is what I'm getting, which are, are not uncommon in uh, mm -hmm. typical Chardonnays. Um, very uh, approachable as far as it goes. There's a little dryness at the end, but that comes from that like tartness, right? It kind of dries out the wine, but it's really light, lightly dry. You know, it's not something that's like heavy and like kind of sits. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a lot more citrusy than our last Chardonnay. Our last Chardonnay was, was very butter. Mm -hmm. like, it was, um, <laughs> yeah, and it's you know so good, more of a winter Chardonnay, I would mm -hmm. say. And this is definitely something. Oh, this I is would definitely on. on a beach with yes. a mm -hmm. grazing table. Right? Yeah, <laughs> like a whole table. Or chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, or chocolate. Absolutely. Yeah, but really lovely stuff here, and we have paired it with some white chocolate raspberry pistachio truffles. Um, that we made ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the truffles really, we used a white chocolate because we wanted it to be really creamy. This is a type of wine that pairs really well with a really fatty fish like halibut or um, sea bass. And because it's um, a little bit tart, it still has a little bit of butter on the mouthfeel, it really helps to balance that fattiness and the creaminess mm -hmm. in the fish or in our case in this lovely um, white chocolate raspberry and truffle um, which we made ourselves like Garrett said hand formed and it's a really nice and creamy you get just a little bit of salt on the pistachio and the tartness with the raspberry and then the whole mouthfeel is just really mm -hmm. nice and creamy which helps to bring out some of those fruity flavors but also just complements the wine quite nicely yeah and the difference in like texture is, is really nice. The thing that I love about the pistachios that they bring, you know, it's that little crunch, but also that roasted flavor, mm -hmm. right, that you get. It kind of brings out that French oak flavor um, into it, where you're going into more of those like earth, like wood flavors that are kind of like, that's weird that you tasted that, um, but <laughs> it's there, like 100%, and it, it's all attributed to how we're pairing these wines and stuff like that, so. Yeah, I think a lot of times as amateur wine tasters, we are trying a white wine or a red wine and you're like, okay, it tastes like wine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like it, you know, these, I like a sweet wine or I like a dry red or whatever it may be. Um, we want to help accentuate some of those flavors that may be a little bit harder to identify um, because we're just not 
quite familiar with them yet. So that's our goal with um, all of our pairings today and always is to help you identify some of those flavors and aromas that you're tasting and smelling as you try new wines um, so that you can learn a little bit more about um, wine and what you're trying and tasting. All right, everybody, welcome back. Um, as you can see, if you have finished your Chardonnay, we have now poured into our red wine glass, our Pinot Noir called Folly of the Beast. Um, this Pinot Noir is from Central Cal Coast, California. It's actually made by this winery that's actually more of a wine club that's making wine. Um, they're called Wink and they're actually starting to really boom and blow up and they're entire mission is basically to make really good approachable wines that are affordable. Um, and that was their main thing with this Pinot Noir as well, is to make it a very elegant but approachable and affordable Pinot Noir. Um, you know, just as we did before, we can hold it up to the light. You can see that Pinot Noirs are a little bit lighter in red um, than you would say a Cab or a Petit Syrah, which we are also trying for this. Um, just because it's a little bit more medium body. That's why Pinot Noirs are a little bit more drinkable sometimes compared to the heavier body cabs and drier wines. But what's nice about this Pinot too is you still get that spice. So your tasting notes are looking at violet, cedar, strawberries, um, and also dark cherry as well. And we decided to pair it with a sea salt caramel because it it typically pairs very well with like barbecue and veggies, so you have that saltiness with it. Um, and it's also aged in French oak, so that goes really well with that caramel flavor that we do too. Um, another really interesting thing about this wine is it actually is considered a 100% Pinot Noir, and it's actually, like I said, a coastal wine. So they grow grapes um, from Monterey to Santa Barbara, um, from clay to sand. So all these different grapes are being grown in different elevations, different types of soil, and then they all come together to create this 100% Pinot Noir. And um, you can go ahead and smell it, take a sip, see what kind of notes you're getting. Um, for me, I definitely smell the fruit. Yeah, that mm -hmm. dark cherry yeah. that you yeah. talked about mm -hmm. right on the nose. It's almost yeah. like tart. Like you, it's, yeah. it's like a cherry cherry, like a lindial mm -hmm. cherry mm -hmm. flavor, you know? Yeah, yeah, I mean, you that cherry. But it really sound, mm -hmm. smells tart. But it's a really nice, smooth Pinot Noir. It is. Which I like. Yeah. Like, the tannins on the end aren't too harsh um, or too overpowering. It's really nice and smooth um, and really approachable, which is what the winery's yeah. um, goal was and is. So um, that's nice that they really achieved that. And it has a really nice uh, artwork on the bottle as well. Yeah, it's super fun. It is, the, um, the tail. The yeah, tail. this is the bottle. Um, so it is really beautiful and the artwork is really, really nice. Um, the Wink Wine Clubs, they don't sell in store like at hy vs or Target or mm -hmm. anything like that. Um, so you can find it online or with us uh, directly. You can purchase a bottle if you really like it. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Another cool thing about this Pinot is it's actually mostly fruit, which is probably why we're sensing the fruit and the tasting notes when we smell it mostly. But it's actually also equally earth, wood, and body. Um, so that adds a lot of the spice and the kind of the woody mm -hmm. flavor that you get when you taste it. You know, when I smell it, I think I'm about to drink a really fruity wine. Mm -hmm. And then I taste it and it's a nice, light, medium-bodied wine with not flavor. too much spice and not too much sweet and not too much tart it's, no, just, it's just really balanced easy it is yeah really yeah. balanced mm -hmm. as far as a pinot goes you know you get that tart up front and then you know you kind of just let it fall over your tongue and then that spice that you talked about comes mm -hmm. into play and that little like oaky flavor but it's just so perfectly balanced i yeah. really mm -hmm. enjoy this pinot um, absolutely i do too i didn't think anything would top Sterling, Sterling. Mm -hmm. from our last, I know. Yeah, that's a good one. If you haven't done our wine and cheese pairing yet, then mm -hmm. you should. <laughs> yes, we should. But again, you know, I think that that's the salt really mm -hmm. with those sea salt caramels when you try it with the wine. And I suggest taking smaller bites because they are kind of big pieces of caramel, yeah. and you don't want to take such a big bite of the caramel and the salt kill. and the chocolate because yeah. you don't want to kill the flavor of the wine and overpower mm -hmm. it. You just mm -hmm. want a little bit of that salt, a little bit of that sweet to go with your earth and your wood in this wine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I would take smaller bites or like 
you know, cut yeah. it into fours or something. And that's a really good point yeah. for wine tasting um, and pairing or just enjoying these types of things in general, that it's really important to stay in the moment and be present. Um, which is great, mm -hmm. especially right now, the past 12 months that we've had, yeah. it's really nice to sit and be present and to really focus on what you're tasting mm -hmm. um, and focus on the art of winemaking of chocolate and these beautiful and delicious um, products that we have in front of you. So um, it's really nice to kind of separate yourself from reality and focus on the, on the wines and the aromas, take small bites and really savor um, both the wine and the chocolate. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right, so now we moved on to our third pairing, which is our Spellbound Petit Syrah. It's a 2018 bottle from California. It's this one right here. It has another really, really beautiful bottle. I just yeah, it's on love. The moon, moon phases. Yeah, the moon cool. phases on the bottle. It's just beautiful. And um, we have paired this with a flourless chocolate cake with some dark chocolate drizzle and fresh raspberries. Um, so this wine is my favorite wine of the whole pairing. I think yeah. we're all in agreement on that one. Yeah. It is so good. <laughs> um, so Spellbound is, um, I guess the mission is nurtured by the sun, balanced by the moon, which describes this wine to a T. It's so perfect. Um, so as we go through our tasting process to smell the wine, and to look at it, this one, mm. it smells to me simultaneously so juicy, but peppery and spicy mm. at the same time. You get some some spice. Some like roasted, like yeah. coffee. There's like some harsher elements mm -hmm. than just fruit, which to me is pepper, like mm -hmm. some roasted yeah, definitely um, spice spices like and stuff so. like that. It's so vibrant and such an eclectic wine. Yes. You know, legs fall really fast, but Very they are thin. thin. Mm -hmm. um, so that is like the viscosity. I feel, I think that the alcohol, higher alcohol content yeah. when they fall quickly like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Because the evaporation is more quick, mm -hmm. yeah. um, which indicates a higher alcohol content. Yes. So um, I literally smell this wine in my entire Mm -hmm. It's so no, good. Like, like I'm same. all like, it's like wow. Well, oh, my mouth just you don't even have to taste okay. it. <laughs> it's Pavlov's response. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 That's why. We know what's coming. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, um, go ahead and try the wine. Okay. <laughs> don't, don't ask me twice. Don't. Yeah. Don't pull yeah. my. Mm -hmm. This oh. wine is so full-bodied mm -hmm. and so fruity. You have a little bit of that spice on the end, but a lot of blackberry and blueberry, which is just beautiful. It's really luscious, yeah. um, and it has a lot of really dark um, berries, like I said, with the blackberries and blueberries. Um, it was aged. Vanilla too. Yeah, a yeah. little bit of vanilla. Mm -hmm. I agree. Um, it was aged in American oak and produced in California. Um, it goes really well with Cajun flavors, barbecue, fried chicken. Um, so we might have to put it on oh, our, our wine list. list. <laughs> our wine list that yeah, with our I think chicken. so. <laughs> yes. um, and Greek food, rosemary, paprika, and a lot of the spices that will help accentuate some of that spiciness mm -hmm. that we're smelling and tasting in the wine. Um, part of why we decided to pair this with the flourless chocolate cake is because that flourless chocolate cake is so silky mm -hmm. and creamy mm -hmm. and rich, decadent. Fudgy, for sure. so good. good. Um, with the raspberries, that helps to accentuate some of those berry notes that we find in the wine. And it really just helps that mouth feel of bringing those two flavors together and making it even better. It's mm -hmm. my favorite. If you can't tell, we're very passionate about this wine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <For real>. And <laughs> it is our favorite by far. Well, and the one thing that I want to say is as far as like food, that pairs well with this, it's like fried chicken, Cajun, Mediterranean, Greek foods. Those are all like areas where the flavors are so pronounced and prominent, like by themselves. Mm -hmm. And this wine stands up very well to it because of the depth of all of these different layers of flavor that it brings. So um, that's that's partially why, you know, I mean, it's, it's just kind of in your face, unapologetic, um, yeah, spicy, fruity. Yeah, it's 
perfect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is, I don't normally like petite Syrahs too much. I'm, my palette is slowly getting up to it, more of the dry mm -hmm. reds, mm -hmm. um, but this particular petite Syrah is really, really balanced and fruity. So it's mm -hmm. not as dry as some of the petite Syrahs that you might come across. Right. So if you're a little bit nervous about going for a drier red than what you're used to, this is a great starting point. Um, and like I said, it's a 2018 bottle. Um, I'm not, I don't think that we mentioned this before, but the year that the wine was produced is really important because mm -hmm. the 2019 bottle of Petit Syrah might be different because of the weather. Yeah. The weather plays a really big role into how the grapes were produced mm -hmm. and how they grow the sugar content how quickly they grow, when they're harvested, mm -hmm. um, et cetera, et cetera. So that plays a lot into how the wine turns out. How rainy it was. Well, yeah, I, I, think, I think I remember when we were doing our sterling, like they said that 2018 was a basically perfect, perfect growing season. So mm -hmm. this year, it, uh, yeah, for Pinots yeah. Um, in, in general, but because of, of a lot of the grapes being sourced throughout California for this wine specifically, which happens a lot, mm -hmm. vineyards cannot get the end result of like grapes and stuff to make all these different kinds of wine with the different soils that they have. So uh, vineyards and winemakers from all around um, kind of collaborate and help each other out to make the best version of the wines that they can possibly put out, which I think is really cool. It's like a collaborative effort just to bring like the best flavors that they can, so. Absolutely. Yeah, this is a really, really nice, nice wine. It's our mm -hmm. favorite by far, especially mm -hmm. paired with that flourless chocolate like, cake. Oh, yeah. oh my gosh, if I could just eat that forever <laughs> and drink this wine forever, like cool, cool. <laughs> I'm okay with it. <laughs> it's too bad tolerance is up there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So right now, um, we are on our last wine sad face and yeah. last chocolate sad, sad face. face also. Um, <laughs> but I think we're ending on a good note here. This is a really unique wine um, that is very drinkable, it's very nice, um, and it's Italian. Um, actually, before our vendor even was talking to us and helping us with this pairing, um, I was like, I've never heard of that before. But she's like, it's Italian, you'll love it. So we're also gonna have a little lesson as well in Italian. So at the top of the bottle, this is also a pretty cool bottle. It's just very classy, exactly what you would think an Italian wine would look at. Mm. But um, at the top of it, it says Tenuta, and Tenuta actually just means wine. So they literally just labeled it wine. Um, below that, it says Sasso Originale. <laughs> Sasso, Sasso Regale. Regale. <laughs> yes. Sasso Regale. Everyone say it together. Sasso, Sasso Regale. Regale. Okay. Um, Sasso Regale is the winery that makes this wine. And then below that, it says Sangio Basse. Sangio Basse. That is the grape Basse. that it is made with. Sangio Basse. And then below that, it says Marima Tuscana, which means Tuscany. So this wine was created in Tuscany, Tuscany off of the coast. It is very, um, it's grown in clay. So it does have a little bit of a heavier body and um, but it's still drinkable, kind of like the Pinot Noir that we had before. Um, if you look at it, especially in the light, it's kind of lighter for this type of wine. This wine is most comparable to a Merlot, but just a little bit earthier, which makes sense because the grapes are grown in clay, primarily. Um, and honestly, when you hold it to the light, it's very red. Very red. Mm -hmm. Like very, that's very red. Like, like, like even if you yes, did compare yeah. this to a Merlot, like way more opaque mm -hmm. um, than a Merlot would be. For and sure. especially when you twirl it, it's just so bright. Yeah, I love so it. Bright. So bright. Cool. Um, what you're looking for when you're smelling this uh, is a lot of cherry aromas. Their profile is usually achieved um, mm -hmm. mid to late September is when these grapes are grown in Italy. And you're looking for really firm, but yet rounded tannins of taste. Um, and the crushed grapes are fermented in stainless steel. So this also does go through the malolactic fer fermentation process as well. It starts off in stainless steel and it's very, God bless you. <laughs> time. Um, and then it's placed for a very short amount of time in um, wood barrels. 
So you have a little bit of that woody taste with this as well. Um, it flavors with wild berries and spice. And they wanted it when they made this to not overstate mm. with the ball flavors and still make it drinkable, which I think that they did truly mm. um, make it very drinkable and very well balanced. Yeah. The reason that we decided to do this with the brie is because we wanted to end on a little bit of a savory. Chocolate can be a lot, but we still obviously want to incorporate chocolate. So we just have a dark chocolate drizzle with dark cherries over this brie. And the creaminess and the dark chocolate really paired well with this wine because it's so drinkable and because it's so light and earthy, adding that creaminess and a little bit of the sweet and savory together really rounds this out, especially because most of the time you wanna pair this wine with a creamier cheese like a ricotta. Um, it also says to do it like a beef tenderloin or barbecue, mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. along those lines. But I really enjoy Ooh, it. Keep this in yeah. mind during the summertime. Yeah. Um, a couple of these wines have paired well with uh, like barbecue meats mm -hmm. and, and smoked meat and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I'm keeping that. Uh, and they're light enough that you, like even on a 90 degree day, I wouldn't mind. And Absolutely. these legs are so nice and long and they thin are. and pretty consistent. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, I love it. Absolutely. I'm drinkable. A little dry finish, but to be expected from mm -hmm. something that's compared to a Merlot, anyways. Yeah, totally. Yeah. But again, yeah. just more earthy because mm -hmm. of the the um, clay that it's grown in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's primarily clay at a very low elevation, very yeah. low. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. For something that's considered like a really dry red, it's really approachable and really drinkable, mm -hmm. which yeah. is nice if you are just getting into some of the drier reds. Um, much like the last one, this is a really nice gateway yeah. into those drier reds because it's still light enough that it's approachable, but it's nice and dry and it really complements that brie really, really nicely. Oh, yeah. um, and Especially with the right cracker, get the right cracker. Yes. Yes. We'll get you, we will yeah. but in the future. The <laughs> yeah. yeah, you'll notice that the crackers you that we... a couple different crackers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You'll notice that the crackers that we gave you for this one it has a little bit of sweetness to it, and that's because the savoriness of some other crackers and the saltiness just, it just clashes. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't go well together. So we wanted something that had a little bit of sweetness to it, um, but we decided to go with this one last because life is short, eat dessert first, yeah. hey, number definitely. one. <laughs> but also, you know, we have had a lot of talk about this evening, and so we wanted to end on still a sweet note, but nothing that was overly sweet, like a really nice little nightcap. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's kind of our goal with these wine pairings is to kind of open up people's minds to things that they might not traditionally try uh, in a like regular uh, traditional like restaurant setting um, because they're intimidated because of different types of wine that they've never tried or like, oh, a red wine is really dry and gonna like make me pucker up a bit and um i think that's our goal with these is just kind of expose you guys to new flavors that you might be a little bit afraid of but then balancing them out with certain things and uh you guys can up your game while entertaining guests uh with all these flavors and wines and stuff and um, all of your wine knowledge yeah absolutely. exactly yes <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Especially because this wine actually is made. So we didn't really talk about that before. We've talked about it in the past, though, where wine glasses, there are red and white glasses. Um, we've all been guilty of drinking the wrong wine with the wrong glass. Yeah. But this one specifically, if you do have a red wine glass, to please use it. It is actually meant to be drank to get the taste and the aeration mm -hmm. from it all with yeah. this wine. Um, so if you do have a red wine glass and you are not using it, maybe try it in that and see the difference. You or might, you might you notice it. Or if you don't have a red wine glass, try it in that white wine and do that little like light slurp. Mm -hmm. It'll aerate it a little bit while it's in your mouth and then yes. you'll notice that whole like mouthfeel change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, That's a good so. point, yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, that's kind of what a decanter does. Right. Mm -hmm. Is it, it's the same idea. It really um, just helps with the aeration of the wine to really bring out those flavors really nicely. And um, we do offer these classes and these pairings for private events, um, personal events, maybe that's a bachelorette party, 
or a corporate event, stuff like that. So if you're ever interested in doing something like this uh, for a special occasion, then please let us know because we certainly do that as well. And we have yeah. so much fun putting these together. Oh, and it's, it's talking. so good so we get to eat and drink wine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. yeah. And we just get so excited about talking about mm -hmm. wine and cheese or chocolate or grazing boards or whatever it may be. It's so much fun and the possibilities are truly endless when mm -hmm. it comes to this. So let us know if you would like to um, participate in one of those or would like some more information. Um, but we thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. Um, we had a blast putting this together for you guys and learning about these particular wines, coming up with these delicious chocolates and dishes for you. So um, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. But um, we hope you guys have had as much fun as we did. Yes. Cheers. 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 <laughs> My wine's gone. <laughs>